Today I'm going to show you what's inside of the differential and how it works to make the wheels turn on your car. So here we are underneath the vehicle. We have the drive shaft where it connects to the universal joint to the rear differential. So with the rear subframe removed in the vehicle, we have a very clear look at how the differential is housed in the rear subframe. Now the CV axle is actually bolted up to the hub here. So I'm just going to remove it with a giant socket. Ow. All right, and now we'll separate the CV axle. And we just have the differential attached to the subframe. So here we've got the differential removed from the vehicle. At the sides here, we have where the half shafts would bolt up to to turn either rear wheel. And at the front here, we have the input where the drive shaft would turn the differential. Now the differential is responsible for allowing a difference in wheel speeds between the right side and the left side wheel when taking a corner. Now when the vehicle is moving in the straight direction, both wheels are turning in the same direction at the same speed. Now when input is supplied from the transmission to the pinion gear here, you can see that both the wheels are moving exactly the same same amount. However, when the vehicle is taking a corner, the inside wheel is going to slow down and the differential is going to allow a difference in wheel speeds between the inside wheel and the outside wheel while the transmission is still providing power to it so it can take that corner. Now, if you look closely, both of these are moving at the same speed. However, when the inside wheel slows down, the outside wheel tends to speed up for the same amount of input action. Now, in order to take a closer look at what's going on inside of here, we're going to have to drain all the oil and take a look inside of this casing. Now, the gear oil inside here is pretty thick so I'm going to remove that drain plug and then I'm going to slowly lift the differential over to drain out that oil. At the pinion I'm just going to back off this nut with the puller on this flange here I'm going to give it a go. Next I'm going to remove all the bolts to remove the differential cover and remove that cover. Now inside of the cover we have a magnetic drain plug to capture any particles floating around. We've also got a breather over here that goes to this valve on the outside. Now sometimes this valve or the hose connected to it could get clogged and that'll cause you to blow out some of the seals. Now things are going to get pretty oily so I'm just going to use my brother's old undershirt here to wipe down everything so we can have a closer look. So here we've got an overall exploded parts diagram of this rear differential. We've got the pinion gear here which mates the drive gear. The drive gear is then bolted to the differential case. Now inside of that case we have this little pin here where we have the two spider gears that pivot about it and those interconnect with the two side gears which go out to each axle. We've also got the differential housing and its associated rear and side seals and the rear pan cover. Now here we have a nice clear look at the guts of this differential. On the side here we have the two main bearings that the guts of the differential ride right up against inside of this housing. Now this big gear is the drive gear and way inside of the back there is the pinion gear that drives it. Now further inside of this housing we have the four small differential or spider Gear. Now as I rotate the input shaft of the pinion, you'll see that this drive gear also rotates and it rotates at the same speed as this carrier. Now inside the carrier, you'll see that these gears are locked and they're not rotating relative to each other, which means that the right side and left side wheels are moving at the same speed in the same direction and this would be ideal if the vehicle is moving straight forward. Now let's say I'm rotating the input shaft but I lock up one of these wheels, you'll see that the spider gears on the inside are now moving relative to each other and that's transferring all of the power from this ring gear to the one other wheel that doesn't have anything holding it. Likewise if I lock up the pinion as if the vehicle is in park and I rotate the right side wheel, you'll see that the ring gear does not move and only the differential gears on the inside move and that allows the other wheel to turn in the opposite direction. Now this design is known as an open differential and its main disadvantage is traction. For example, if I'm rotating the pinion gear and I hit a patch of ice on this side, well the energy from the engine has a tendency to go through the least path of resistance and it's just going to turn and slip this wheel here while this one remains stationary. Therefore you're going to be stuck on that ice doing a one wheel burnout while the wheel that has traction is not going to get any torque. Now there are a number of ways in order to overcome this disadvantage. The first of which is to use a limited slip differential which has a series of clutches and viscous fluids to limit the difference in torque between these two wheels but still allow a tiny bit of slip so you can take corners. Now a limited slip differential uses two clutches on the two side gears to separate the gears from the shaft himself that go out to the CV shaft. Now the clutches have these tabs on it that lock into the differential casing as well as these teeth on it that lock into the shaft itself. Now when driving straight the spring is going to put a lot of pressure on these clutches and cause them to lock which is going to essentially create a locked solid axle. However, if there's a small difference in wheel speed, such as taking a corner, it'll easily overcome that spring pressure and allow a little bit of slip in these clutches so you can take that turn. There's also the locking differential for low speeds, which will completely lock all of these gears together, allowing them to rotate 
tight and get you out of that icicle. And then there's a brake actuated traction control which will clamp the brake down on this side, increasing its resistance. The energy will then come through over here to the wheel that has traction as its path of least resistance and get you out of that puddle. And now I'm going to separate these side flanges here and the one on this side. Now this side flange is what connects the CV shaft to the spider gears inside of here. Next up I'm going to remove the main bearing bolts. And then now we can separate the bearing caps and one on this side. I'm just going to use my seal puller and remove this seal here. Just going to remove this differential gear from the housing assembly here. Things are about to get really greasy again so I'm just going to use my brother's old sock here to wipe it off. And here we have the differential removed from the housing and you can see the small little spiral gears on the inside there that are free spinning. Now it's important to note that the two gears on the outside here do not attach to this housing directly. As a matter of fact the flange will bypass the housing through this bearing over here and connect to this little gear on the outside. The housing itself attaches to the differential casing through this bearing over here. Now the bearing itself has a conical surface area which is good for rotating but it also allows it to absorb any axial force forces that come because this ring gear is cut on an angle. Now in order to remove this pinion gear I'm going to use a special press and now we can reach in and remove the pinion gear. Now with the pinion gear removed you can see it's got a special kind of swirled cut on it as well as on the ring gear and that's to make things a little bit more quiet but also to transfer more power. You can see just how they interlock over here and it will rotate that ring gear. Now you'll see that the pinion gear is considerably smaller than the ring gear and that's going to give you a torque multiplication. Now the ratio between the pinion gear and the large gear is called the final drive ratio and ultimately determines your acceleration versus top speed trade-off. Now that final drive ratio is determined by the number of teeth in the large gear divided by the number of teeth on the small gear. Now here I've got the front differential of a 2001 Corolla I took apart a few years ago. This used to sit inside the transmission and didn't have a separate casing like this one. This one here is the one from the G35. You can see how the spider gears are much thicker and chunkier compared to the ones on the smaller Corolla but the overall ring gear size is about the same diameter. Now I'm just going to remove all these bolts. I can actually remove this ring gear here just like that. Now besides completely blowing up, the differential casing also has a few other failure points including the seals on the sides and at the pinion that could leak. We've got these bearings here that could wear out causing noise or knocking. We've also got these bushings here that could wear out causing a loss of power distribution under hard acceleration. And that's pretty much all the components that go into making the differential on your car work. Make sure you follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes footage and subscribe for more videos just like this one. However, when there's a difference in wheel speed between the left and the right side... Oh, seriously?